hello everyone and uh, welcome back to a new video so in the last video i gave you a brief description of how a steering system works on board a modern day cargo ship in this video however i will be talking about in detail how a hydraulic circuit of a steering gear system works so in this in this ship on my current ship we are having a rotary vane type steering gear system so i will be giving you a detailed explanation how a hydraulic circuit in a rotary vane steering gear system works this video is going to be helpful for marine engineers especially who find it difficult to understand the working principle of a hydraulic circuit diagram so without any further ado let's get started now look at the hydraulic circuit diagram of a rotary vane steering gear first let's identify the individual components of the system this is an electric motor electric motor this electric motor drives a hydraulic pump so this is the hydraulic pump this pump is a unidirectional fixed displacement pump by fixed displacement it refers to the fact that this pump has a fixed capacity this here is a pressure gauge this pressure gauge will indicate the dis uh, hydraulic oil pressure in the discharge side of the hydraulic pump we have a level switch here in case this level switch detects a low level low oil level in the reservoir hydraulic oil reservoir this will give off an alarm and it will automatically start the second pump unit and stop the one with low level alarm these two here are pressure relief valves these relief valves are used to protect the system from any overpressure that can occur in case any overpressure does occur in the hydraulic oil system this relief valve has a pilot line and this pilot line will push the valve down and it will safely discharge any excess oil back to the reservoir there is another relief valve provided for redundancy purposes and just in case uh, the primary re primary relief valve fails this will act as a backup and this pointer indicates that the setting of this relief valve can be altered these are this is a check valve the purpose of check valve is to prevent flow of oil prevent back flow of oil this check valve will only allow the flow of oil in one direction these two let's call them one and two these are pilot operated check valves pilot operated check valves these check valves acts act like a normal check valve and will only allow the flow of oil in one direction however if the check valve is provided with a pilot oil supply like in this case if the check this check valve is provided with a pilot oil supply from this line it will act as a it will act as a it will act and it will uh, allow the flow of oil in the reverse direction so kindly remember that only if pilot oil supply is provided in that case only 
the pilot operated check valve will allow the flow of oil in both direction however if the pilot oil supply is removed it will only allow the flow of oil in one direction these here are our veins let rotary veins let's shade them for better understanding these are the rotary veins these are the rotary veins and let's mark the individual chambers let's call this chamber a the connected to the outer ring this let's call this chamber b and let's call this as chamber c and um, let's call this as chamber d this one as e and um, this one as f now let's look at the most important component of this system and this is the dcv let's call this dcv number one dcv or direction control valve let's call this as dcv number two the purpose of a dcv in a hydraulic circuit is to change the direction of flow of hydraulic oil passing through it so this dcv has three positions position one position two position three this dcv number two also has three position position one two and three this arrow here as you can see this arrow symbol indicates that this dcv this uh, dcv number one is solenoid activated so in order to change the position of the dcv it will have to be fed with a solenoid signal a uh, signal in this case in this in our steering system this signal comes from the helm unit or from the bridge and this also has a spring return this spring will ensure that once the signal is once the solenoid is de-energized the dcv will return to its original center position that is position number two and this dcv here has a push button this is a push button in case there is a steering failure or the dcv number one is unable to energize the crew members can locally operate the dcv by pressing the push button and this will help in change uh, giving a rudder movement this push button also has as you can see coupled with a spring in when the push button is released the dcv will return to the position number two and let's look at this dcv number one this dcv number one this symbol here indicates that it is this dcv is pilot actuated which means that the dcv will have to be supplied by a pilot oil pressure from this pilot line in order to change the position of dcv if the dcv is supplied whichever the side whichever the side the pilot oil supply is fed from the dcv will change to that position so if the pilot oil supply comes from the left side the dcv will assume the position number one and if the pilot oil supply comes from the right side the dcv will assume the position number three and whenever the pilot oil supply is removed the dcv will return to the center position that is the position number two let's now look how the flow of oil happens when the system is running in idle condition as you can see the motor will drive the hydraulic pump the pump will take suction from the reservoir and the oil will pass like this it will pass here it will a branch of oil will go to the pressure gauge and show the discharge pressure 
the oil will then go like this the oil will go here here you can see there are two small flow restrictors and both are branching out to the both are branching out here the purpose of this flow restrictor is to limit the amount of oil flowing in and this is done to in, this is done in order to keep the lines flushed filled filled with oil so in cent when the, whenever the D dcv number 2 is in center position this will ensure the this these connections will ensure that the lines here are filled with oil the oil will then come here go down it will be standby at this pressure relief valve if the pressure exceeds a certain set point then the oil will flow like this it will come out and it will go down to the reservoir another branch of oil here will come down like this and it will be standby here in case the oil pressure increases again the oil will go down to the reservoir via this line now the main let's look at the main part the oil here will come down like this it will go down like this it will cross over here it will come down like this and it will also go up this line the oil in this line will go down to the reservoir the oil in these two lines will cross enter these pilot lines after entering these pilot lines it will travel up it will go to the left and right side of the dcv number two now since equal oil pressure will be acting on the left and right sides of this dcv number two the dcv number two will remain in the center position the oil will also enter this line here and it will be uh, standby here and since there is a check valve the oil will not be able to go to the other side let's see what happens when a helm order is received now when a helm order is received a uh, electrical signal will activate this dcv number one let's assume that the left side of dcv number one is activated so as we saw earlier the oil will be coming down here now since the left side of dcv is activated the oil will go like this and there is no cross connection so oil will enter this pilot line and also enter here the oil entering here as earlier will be standby here now oil entering the pilot line will go up through the flow restrictor and it will go to the left side of this dcv number two and the left side of the dcv number two will be activated this will result in the main oil supply here main oil supply going straight it will be connected like this and it will enter this line the oil will flow like this oil will come here and from this point it will send a pilot supply to DC pilot operator check valve number two and keep it in open position the oil will also then go straight here the oil will then enter chamber number A and it will exert a full pressure on the vein like this oil will now go up remaining oil it will travel around the ring like this it will enter the chamber B and exert a pressure like this it will then travel here and enter the chamber C with and enter a pressure like this now as you can visualize when the oil flows in this direction it will exert a pressure on the rotary vanes which will result in a clockwise motion of the rudder now as the rotary vanes move in a clockwise direction 
there has to be some exhaust oil which will be coming out let's trace how the exhaust oil exhaust oil will be coming out as the rotary vanes move in this direction the oil from chamber E will come out like this it will come here the oil from chamber F also will come out go like this the oil from chamber D will also come out cross over and reach this point the oil will then travel and come out like this as you can see now since the pilot operator check valve is already open the oil is free to go past this check valve oil will then come here Now since the left side of DCV number 1 is activated, the oil will flow straight down like this. It will go like this. It will come down. The majority of the oil will flow down via the filter. This is a filter here. It will filter down. It will be filtered down to the reservoir. Now some oil will also go into this branch and as you can so as you saw the left side of DCV number 1 is activated it will go down like this here and it will enter this line and be standby here and some oil will enter this pilot line it will also go up through the flow restrictor but it will not be activating the right side of the DCV number 2 since the pilot oil pressure on the left side is far more therefore the DCV number 2 will stay in the left hand position or the position number 1 now let's see what happens when the right side of the DCV number 1 is activated now when a, a solenoid signal is sent when the DCV number 1 receives a signal and let's assume the right side of the DCV number one is activated the oil will be coming down like this the main uh, oil bulk of the oil and it will cross over into this port here as you saw as you can visualize the right side of the DCV is activated it will go into this line via this line it will be standby here it cannot go past the check valve oil will also enter this pilot line and via this flow restrictor it will go and activate the right side of the DCV number 2 now as we saw earlier once the right side of the DCV right position of the DCV number 2 is activated this main oil will cross over into this position it will enter like this high pressure oil It will come up like this it will send a pilot oil supply and open the pilot operator check valve number one then oil will then let me just erase these markings oil will then go like this into the inner ring oil will enter the chamber F and exert a pressure like this oil will also enter this ring and from here it will go like this into the chamber E let me correct this oil will enter the chamber E and exert a pressure like this oil will also enter the oil will also flow like this enter the chamber D and exert a pressure like this this will result in an anti-clockwise movement of the rudder stock as you can visualize an anti-clock rudder will move in a, the rudder stock will move in an anti-clockwise movement and as you can visualize there will be some exhaust oil which will be coming out 
for example from the chamber B it will come out let me change it to a different color come out it will go like this enter the screen flow like this oil will also come out from chamber A it will come out go out like this oil will also come out from chamber C oil will come out like this as you can visualize the oil will go past the pilot operator check valve since it is already in open condition it will go like this enter here and since the right side of dcv2 is activated it will cross over go like this and go down bulk of the oil will go down through the filter back to the reservoir some of the oil will come here and it will also go down it will go down this way it will enter this pilot line via the flow restrictor it will go here since the pressure on the right hand side or the position number three of the dcv number two is more by at all pressure the dcv number two will stay in the same position that is position number three and a branch of oil will also go into this line and be standby at the check valve now let's see what is this component this is a, what we call as a shock valve The purpose of a shock valve, the purpose of a shock valve is to prevent any damage happening to the steering gear system, the components of the steering gear system. This shock valve is useful when uh, bad weather or when the sea is really rough. There can be rogue waves which can hit the rudder and it can cause the rudder to move. So this shock valve will ensure that there is no hydraulic lock happening. For example, a rudder, a shock, a rogue wave will cause a rudder to move in an anti-clockwise movement. Therefore, this vane will try to move like this. In that case, the oil will have a high pressure here. So this oil will flow like this. And this shock valve, when it sends, when the oil pressure here reaches a set point, it will push this valve down and it will send the oil back into this opposite chamber, thereby preventing any damage. Now, similarly, if a rogue wave or a sea or for any other reason, an uh, unwanted movement is happening of the on the rudder if a clockwise movement happens so as you can visualize the vane will try to move in a clockwise direction this vane here so therefore the oil here will be pressurized will get pressurized so the oil will go like this enter here this will be this will act as a pilot pressure it will pull it down and connect the relief valve so the oil will then go down back into this opposite chamber so this will act like a counterbalance and prevent any hydraulic lock from happening in the system thereby protecting the system and its components now kindly have a look at the system again for your reference there are two pump pump systems let's call it pump one and two the at one time only one pump system will be running in a rotary vane system and one pump unit can provide 100 percent of torque rated torque on this system hey guys so that was the working principle of a rotary vane type steering gear system if you have any doubts uh, please add 
your doubts in the comment section and I will do my best to reply to each one of them. If you did like the video, please uh, give it a thumbs up and um, I will see you soon in the next one. Till then, ciao.